Common Courtesy. I'm Sean Nicholas, a.k.a. Desire Some More. And next to me, I have the very lovely... Ashley Renee, host of Sex with Ashley Renee on YouTube. And next to her, we have... Nikki Prue. Hello. The voice one and only. Voice, and I apologize. <clears throat> I guess it's better you can see me. Maybe I can, like, have people Express. lip read. <laughs> Sign language. <laughs> Oh, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're back from. Uh, I was gone for a little while. Yeah, we've been gone uh, from you guys for a couple of weeks. Some of it's my fault, and you know we're on a little bit of a hiatus. Everyone took a little break. Uh, Nikki was in uh, Massachusetts, yep. right? Yeah, I went home to visit family and yeah. collect my sister, and then we drove back. And mm-hmm. it occurred to me that that's now the second time I've made that drive in like 13 months. Yeah, I really don't want to do it again. Like, How long is that? It took us, um, it's like 22 hours. So we left at like quarter of 10 Thursday morning, stopped Thursday night, and then took off about the same time the next day, and we got there at like around 11 Friday night. Oh, so wow. It wasn't that, in retrospect, it wasn't terrible, but oh my God, that's the longest drive. The longest drive ever. Ever. I thought we were going to die going through New York. <laughs> it was terrifying, but uh, we made it. And, we made it uh, back. Yeah, we persevered. Here I am. And your sister's in town with us. Yay. Yay. Yeah. Yep. Um, I hear special guest. <laughs> hello. And uh, I, this uh, past couple of weeks, I've been doing a couple of shows. I did a benefit for uh, suicide, suicide prevention. We're going to have a walk uh, in October. We're raising money for that. And um, also, I did a show. It was my friend's birthday. Jen Jinka. She's a local drag queen like myself. <laughs> and uh, we did a show with her. Um at Enigma, and that was so much fun. Like, I've never performed that stage, like, being an actual book performer. I'm going places. Like, this is awesome. Like, yes. I so, have so proud much fun. of you. Thank you. We had so much fun. We did this um, group number. We have this group number to uh, Lose My Breath by Destiny's Child, and it is choreographed for the gods. So like, I, I can't believe we still remembered it. Like, I watched the video, and I'm laughing to myself because I'm like, holy shit, like, after all these months... We still got it, and we were in sync, boo. Like, if you want to do some like Destiny's Child, get Jen Jinka, Desire Some More, and Lilith Black at your show. So, I Ashley, need to see that. <laughs> you, I'll, I'll show it. I'll, I'll definitely, I'll put it on our website. Um, Ashley, what's been going on with you? Yeah, I um, I started my senior year of college. I graduated in the spring. Started applying for graduate school. Turns out that cost five hundred dollars oh. in application fees. Oh damn. So I do have feet pics for sale. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing that out there, that's what I've been up to. So that being said <laughs> let's talk about race. <laughs> so uh, a couple of weeks ago on social media, like um, there was an outbreak outrage over a certain situation. And I just kinda wanted to like get to a certain point that I found very interesting. Um, this uh, one of uh, this person was using uh, derogatory language, and everyone immediately jumped at her and said, "Oh my God, this person's racist!" And I just kind of want to ask the uh, ask you guys, ask the table, just if because you use derogatory language, if you're angry or anything like that, or in any form, if it's not directed towards a person, are you a racist, or does that make you racist? How do you guys? about that what do you think I don't think it makes you a racist I think that's kind of a hard label to put on someone because you said something when you were angry to yourself or and it's not it's kind of a gray area because you know it's like well the whole did, if no one gets hurt you know you shouldn't I mean I don't like to make a habit of doing it have I done it and said things that I probably shouldn't like just in my own car when I'm mad and just having a bad day yeah I have I don't mean anything by it I don't consider myself a racist person and I don't consider people who do the same to be either. But I mean, at the end of the day, is it like a nice thing to do? I don't know. I don't feel good about it. <laughs> like if I ever do accidentally let something fly, I never feel great about it. It's right. usually just heat of the moment. And you say it never, ever, never, at least in my case, is it ever directed at a person. I think that's very different if you let your anger fly in the direction of a human being, you know? But I think it's it's definitely kind of a gray area. Yeah. Ashley. Um, so I want to bring up the idea of casual racism. <sighs> so let me just go on here. So what that can count as are like uh, racist jokes, backhanded compliments. So like 
oh, you're so pretty for a black girl or something like that. Um, it, it, there's really a focus on stereotypes. Uh, it's usually not intended to cause harm. It's usually just meant to be light, funny, whatever it is. But the impact of the statement and the action matters just as much as intention. Right. So these jokes, um, there's a specific word for like the, the pretty for a black girl thing, but I can't think of it right now. Um, all of these, uh, I can't remember it. Never mind. So, uh, wow. Totally no, wrong. but I understand what you're saying. Like, I've, is as if someone says, oh, you're very intelligent for a black guy or a Spanish girl. Is that what you mean? Yes. Something like that? that. That sticks with you. That hurts. It does. You, it, and it, it, for so for the person making the joke, it's over and done with. They'll forget about it. For the person that it's, derogatory against, prejudice shitty. against, it's, that's, yes. It's an easy way to make someone feel like absolute shit. It's completely un, it's un, that's unintentional. Back to the point, um, that's a little bit different from saying, like, directly, like, once I was angry and I was in the car and I was driving, I was like, you know, I was thinking, I'm like, does that make me, I didn't mean to say that, excuse me, but does that make me a racist person or does that, my opinion, I don't really think so. Like, using... It it depends what your intention is. You know, like, if you intend to cause... If you intend... Oh, God, now I'm calling... I am calling myself racist. It, it, I think it's more matters if I think that I'm better than that person. I'm if not you saying... Really, if you really... Intention, but if that's how you truly feel in right. real life, then that's a different thing. I don't think that's right. how I don't you feel, feel, but that's, I think, where the gray area comes in. Yeah, because... you can say it and not mean it. Right, like I well, like I mean, like I say it, but I'm saying it to be hurtful. But do I actually think that I'm better than an Asian person or exactly. any other race? Of course not, no. But like, um, so we can even bring this conversation back to Roseanne when she said about the woman about I can't remember her name right now, uh, but when she said that girl that used to be work with Obama, she looks like a cross if a Muslim and a Planet of the Apes had a baby, she, this would be it. I didn't hear that. Oh, this was months ago. That's how. That's oh, why that's why Roseanne lost her show. That's good. Yeah, and that that was definitely racist. I mean, calling her a monkey. Um, well, but what if she doesn't think that she's better than her? That her race is better than hers? Then she's not racist by your definition. But at the same time, Roseanne does have a history of making comments like that. So, is the history of the comments what makes the racism not the intention? I think both of it. I think, honestly, both of it is, it's both. You need both. Uh, you need both. You so say, then, yeah. I'm sorry, but so say Roseanne says, no, I, I don't think that I'm, that white people are superior to black people at all, but she has the history. That would make her not racist. Well, okay, like, also your actions as well, like, the difference between what I just said and Roseanne. Roseanne is not, is she... She really, I feel like she, she honestly believes that. out there in the world, too, for people to record and write down in front of millions and millions. I feel like that's where there's a line, too, is different than you being pissed off in traffic and muttering whatever right. it was you said and to yourself. And again, that's where I'm like, no, it doesn't necessarily make it okay, but you're not yelling it out to the world and putting it out there intentionally so people can hear you. Right. And also, it's like, uh, and I wanted to bring up this other thing. This girl was saying, um, like, the N-word. Like, that's African-Americans were Like, only African-Americans can say that. How do we feel about that? Like, I I, I, I so. can answer, but... I feel like you, you're the only one who has an opinion that matters in this conversation. Oh, that's very true. True. But, like, all right, well, you know, like, is that... As a gay woman... <laughs> None of the heterosexuals are allowed to say it. <coughs> but like, no, like I, I don't like it, that word in general because I don't a, like yeah. of what I don't like what's behind it. You know what I mean? Like, and it doesn't matter if somebody says it playfully and somebody like it. it I just don't like. Does that make them homophobic? No, I don't think it does. I mean, can do homophobic people say it? Yes, of course. But I don't think just because somebody says it in passing and uses it carelessly doesn't mean that they're homophobic. It means that they're probably a little bit ignorant and I don't Prejudiced. yeah or or they could just be saying it because they're ignorant and uneducated and think it's just a you're using it as stupid like you know idiot, yeah. you know what I mean a lot 
And I feel like that doesn't happen as much anymore because there is more education on it. But I just don't like the word. I'm never going to, I just, I don't like it. I don't like that. I don't like the N word either. But again, right. that's not. Because I, I mean, because like there's, to me, there's two different ones. There's the one, there's a hard R and there's the A. And when you say, I'll say it. That to me is like it's not the same thing. It's it may it may have derived from the word of the hard R because the hard R means ignorant. You know that's that's the actual derogatory word. But the A, that's like a friendship thing. And honestly, I'll be honest. Like I don't think it's not saying that I don't think that other people, other races, should use that word. But it would make me feel uncomfortable. Like if they if someone was like you know some white person, like that would make me feel slightly uncomfortable but then again i can also say that maybe i should grow a little bit more and you know see a little bit more and not be offended by that like if they if they're trying to be my friend you know because i had a puerto rican guy who would say oh like he's my friend and he's my friend but i didn't have a problem with him saying that so that actually that's i was literally just thinking this a lot of i i find that a lot of other minorities use the n-word and they're like oh well i'm minority i'm discriminated against i'm allowed to say it yes and yeah. no i don't think so i don't think so at all because of the history of it it's like i was trying to explain this to someone the other day yes it maybe didn't start off is a bad word it did but it, you know what i mean yeah uh neither did the swastika we don't use the swastika anymore Cause Cause the the behind, behind, yeah. yeah, yeah. Everyone knows what it what it means. If, yeah. If you say that to somebody or say it about something, I, yeah. It's, it's a slippery it's just slope. What's, when it gets to that, it gets to a slippery slope. Like it's. Well, and that's why I brought up the casual racism thing right. because maybe you're not racist, but you're fueling the ability for racists to exist by by casual racism is still racism. And right. actually, so me saying that means a casual racist is a racist. So, because what you're doing is you're enabling people who have the worse racism to do this. Because yeah. you're telling them, oh, it's a joke. I'm it's okay for... Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. I think if you participate in casual racism, which is what we're speaking about, where you're saying it in... Pa- Even if you say it to yourself, I never use any of those words alone in my car. I barely even think them because it makes me personally uncomfortable because I would be participating in casual racism even if I'm the only person who knew about it Mm -hmm. that's a moral code for me and I'm not judging anyone I'm just saying yes yes in my opinion it is racism still okay all right so um this weekend I'm just to move on from that topic it's a nice little segue to it this weekend um I would call it nice well, not nice, but a great, or great, but it's a nice segue to uh, Kamala Harris this weekend. She was at a town hall setting, and um, this, uh, one of the people in the audience asked her a question, and he's, he was talking about President Trump, and he used the word, um, how, he basically said, how are you going to stop the mental retardation, of, what was it? Mental mentally retarded, retarded actions of this president. Of this president. And Kamala Harris is coming under fire for that. And the question, my question is to that is, should she, should she be held responsible for what someone else had said? Um, Ashley? I think what you're failing to mention in this is that she laughed. Mm. And oh, she yeah, said, she laughed. well said. Twice. twice. She said, well said twice. So she knew what she was saying. That's where the accountability comes in. She could have said a million other things. A million other things. This is a woman who's very smart on her feet, very quick on her feet. We've seen that in the debates. She knew what she was saying whenever she said well said. That was an agreement. I think that there's a way that she could twist it and be like, oh, I meant everything else that he said. Exactly. I was thinking this after I listened to what else mm-hmm. he said. But but because she laughed, stretch. she laughed. And that's what gives it away that she, she meant well said about the R word. Yep. But, you know, honest, my thing is, when I watched it, she seemed like he, the guy was telling, he seems like the guy was making a joke, and she didn't see that coming. You're Casual alive. discrimination. Well, no, I, is it? Because I think he was making a joke about, I mean, come on, we all know what the president's doing today, and the things that he's saying. It's stupid, I think it's he's moronic. Right. No, it's not that either, but I think he's just making a joke, and she laughed, but really, she should come, look, Nikki, did you really think she should become under fire? 
It wasn't because it because I would think that. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I mean because I watched it and I was like, oh, how bad can this be? And I kind of just like Ugh. because I feel like if she had just kind of laughed it off and then went into an answer, she could have maybe gotten away with that. And if she had just said, well said, with a straight face, she could have gotten away with that. But the fact that she chuckled and then, you know, pointedly said, well said. Twice. Twice. Like, I just, I don't think it's a good look for her. And I feel like, if anything, she should have just owned up and been like, because now she's trying to say, oh, I didn't really hear clearly what he said. Um, or I didn't process that right away. Yes, you did. Yeah, I mean, yes, I don't, I don't agree with her saying that. I think that was the wrong way to spend that. I would have been like, you know what? Because, like I but said, the to fact me, that she did, and now she's under fire, just admit it and apologize and be like, yes, that was in poor taste. I agree with that. I yeah. that was in poor taste because there's nothing you can do. You can't take it back. Because I'll be honest, if I was in the same situation, I think I would have laughed too. I mean, we all, we're all human. You know, no one's perfect. I mean, they're running for president, and I think. I think a lot of times we think the president is a perfect human being, and he's not. Like there, Clearly. there is, there is. A, <laughs> but every every president, like everyone has failings. Like yeah. they're a human beings. So like I don't think I'm. I'm just. I feel indifferent. I don't think she should come under fire for this. I mean, I think. I don't think by her action of laughing. But I think I just don't think she should. I, it wasn't her words. I work. just think it's I a combination think, of things. I would think if it was her words. It would be way different. I could well, definitely of course, agree with you. Right. I don't think she should be under fire as if she, you know, I think it was just one of those mistakes, like just a, literally like a social faux pas where she mm-hmm. just kind of chuckled and forgot herself. But accountability. Exactly. Is if she counts. had gone, and if I wouldn't have any problem with it at all. Right. If she had just been, okay, yep, that was a poor taste. I'm sorry, my bad, but. See, but if she's not holding accountability for this tiny Small mistake little thing what else is she like, not going to hold accountability for we're not in we're not even getting into her whole issue with um trans pe- trans people in prisons <laughs> which she won't yeah friends. well i've never heard, i haven't heard that but i oh, have not she was putting like trans women in men's prisons and well, no, denying them treatment i've only heard that from you but i've never heard that in the like I haven't read it yet. I haven't seen it. Now I'm not saying it's not Have true. You seeked it out? I haven't. I looked it up. I haven't. Oh. I didn't find it. But I'm not saying it's not true. But it's just like Joe Biden when um she come at the one of the debates they had uh, a couple months ago. She was talking about Joe Biden and the busing rule, and he was holding her. He was, she was holding him accountable for something that he did years ago, and probably was a mistake. So same thing with this. Are we gonna hold? Kamala Harris to every like are we gonna hold her accountable for the rest of her life for laughing at what this guy said or even back in when she was putting men in trans I mean trans women in men's prison back I would say back then I mean are you gonna hold her accountable for that for the rest of her life I will until she holds accountability herself because I would have to say this like back then they didn't really understand transgendered and the way of thinking but she knows now and she can't and for some reason she can't step up and apologize for making a mistake. So by not apologizing for a mistake and owning up to it, you're telling me that you agree with it, that you don't regret it, that you didn't think it was a mistake. Just say you did it, say you're sorry, and then no one will come for you. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> like, it's pretty black and white It is pretty to simple. Me. I agree with you. I just think the biggest thing is once you make a mistake, just own up to it. Instead of arguing with people, and especially people who are experiencing that prejudice. Like, if someone walks up, someone... I don't, I'm going to go back to race, but if, if you make a joke, if you make a, a racist joke, someone of that race comes up to you, says, hey, that hurt my feelings, and you're like, oh, well, it was just a joke. That's not, that's not okay, because you're not there to decide. The person who is the object of the joke is there to decide. In this case, people with learning disabilities, it's there. <coughs> it's for them to decide. <coughs> I just still have a, I still have a problem with everyone coming to fire on putting her under the fire when she didn't she was the one that said it he did and yeah you laugh and see because you're saying that you, she said well said well said and you're saying that she you're, she she's agreeing with it but like they said in a live in a live interview like that you don't know what the next person is going to say and her reaction I think her reaction was just a human reaction I don't think she was trying to be hurtful or 
things like that. I think she's trying to answer this question, but you have to still be... Because Hillary Clinton got... Um, they, they came after Hillary Clinton for saying that she wasn't likable at all. So, I mean, do you think that maybe played into that? Like, you... Because to be a president, you have to be likable. And that's one... I've heard, like, with, with women, they were saying about Hillary Clinton, that was her problem. So do you think that that's why she did that? I think it doesn't matter why she did it. Right. It's just the action. Yeah. So, no. yeah, sure. Yeah, she might have wanted to be relatable. Own it. I don't know. The accountability thing is right. I agree with the last yeah. part. Like, when she told the guy, when she told that woman, she was like, I didn't really hear him. I'm like, that's the wrong thing to say. I do agree with that. Because I would have been like, listen. And that's honestly my biggest problem with it mm-hmm. at this point. Like, I think yeah. we, can, we all Everyone agree that... Everyone Exactly. We all agree... That nobody would, I wouldn't crucify her for that. I know she was not, I mean, I don't know her. But I, from what we've seen so far, <laughs> she seems like a person with good intent. And, yeah. you know, she's been very stand-up and great so far. But just own up to it. That's it. That's the only problem I have with it. Same. Okay, so moving on. Oh, yes, this last topic. You so. ready to talk about <laughs> lewd and lavicious acts? Yeah, let's do it. Always. Uh, so, in recent years, some of the, one of the biggest trends for in dating is for men to send women and other gay men unsolicited dick pics. Now, in certain states, this is illegal. So, we were asking ourselves, should this be a crime? <laughs> Ashley. All right. Uh, so, I will say in the beginning, I thought the way that this was phrased, and I'll read it, Um, I thought that it was just uh, about men. Not the case. It says electronic transmission of sexually explicit images or video is considered a class C misdemeanor. It comes with a $500 fine. Because my whole whole thing in the beginning was, I mean, uh, men get a lot of scrutiny for unsolicited dick pics, as they should. But I'll throw myself under the bus here. I send lots of naked photographs of myself to strangers. Not strangers. People without them asking for it. That's still sexual harassment if they didn't want it, if it made them uncomfortable. So I, I think it's good that everyone is being held accountable, um, men, women, otherwise. Um, let me see here. 78% of millennial women have received a dick pic in the last 10 years. Oh, an issue that I, I find with this becoming law is that in order to prove this, or even investigate it, the app that it was sent on must be subpoenaed. This means that all of that person's uh, personal information, I don't know, say they were selling drugs, say they were prostituting, I know those are extreme examples, but say they were doing that on those apps, suddenly the police have full access to that, and then they're in trouble. And women, and men too, people don't, already don't report rapes. So imagine... I can't imagine people are going to openly admit to, like, do this because they're having to hand over a bunch of personal, possibly incriminating evidence. Not even that. that. The police are looking at their naked photographs. Uh Say they have naked pictures. On that other note, this is my last point, I promise. Yeah, you're good. Um, Laws don't always necessarily have to be for punishment. Because laws set the tone of what we as a society see as socially acceptable. So by having this law, even if people don't use it, even if it's not enforced by police, this is sending a message to people and saying, we are not okay with this as a society. You cannot do this to other people. And so it kind of Mm. shifts our idea about it. So that's definitely a pro on making it law. Yeah. There's there's both sides of the coin. I'm kind of stuck on it. Right. Um, uh, Nikki... Almost said Ashley. <laughs> Again? <laughs> I'm sorry. Just repeat exactly what you said, like it's the exact same. Everything. <laughs> no, honestly, I feel like I kind of agree almost 100% because, yeah, I think you're right. If, it, if anything, it might just cut down on the amount that it's happening and make people understand, like, there is this new statute of limitations because this is, like, kind of a new thing mm-hmm. um, in the last what, few decades or so that this right. has become, like, a problem. Not even that long probably so I think yeah having a law is definitely a good idea um and depending on I feel like it has to be one of those things like severity like if somebody does that one time and they get in trouble and it ruins their whole life is that really fair probably not no so I feel like yeah level of severity but it 
it should just, it should be known and out there that it's really not okay. Like, Costa, we don't want it. We don't, we don't want, want it. it. Just, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I have a I feeling. Mean, and if we do, we'll ask for it. It's yeah. really yeah. the point. Like, because mm-hmm. I have a, 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 a feeling about, a, a, I feel a certain type of way about this because I was just telling you guys earlier in the meeting that we're having, um, that I, since I've added my drag profile to my regular profile, and I have my um, I have a picture of myself and as desire some more on it, I get a lot of like unsolicited dick pics from men all around the world. Like literally, if you go through if you go through my Facebook message, it's on Facebook Messenger too. And this is my problem. Hold on, this is Facebook Messenger, and to me, Facebook is an app to keep in touch with your friends, and I. Grinder, I can understand because everyone's there for the same thing. You know, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. No, <laughs> that happens. That happens. I hear, I, and I believe in it. I believe in it. But at the same time, like you, everyone's there for the same thing. It is a dating app, and it's a gay men's dating app. So we know we know how guys are. But if I even if I got if I got one on that one on Grinder or like Scruff or Tinder or anything like that, I don't mind because that's what. I'm not really asking for it, but like it's it makes that's a lot what more I'm there for. Than just yes, blindly on Facebook Messenger. Yeah, on Facebook, it's, it, to me, then that's harassment. When I mean, it's on Facebook Messenger, it's definitely harassment because I'm I'll be at work, and yeah. sometimes we have to like make a call to this company, <laughs> like the C. They have like this CL deal, like you have to make a call. And you know, you just whip out my phone. Hello, last thing I it's want. Not all you're whipping out. Hello. <laughs> last thing I want is the last thing on uh, the last thing on my phone for someone to see is this per- random person's dick on there. And I'm not gonna lie, some of them are nice. <laughs> it's the ugly ones we don't <laughs> it's the want. Ugly ones we don't want. No, but like, no, we're not. We're not discriminating based on dicks. <laughs> but, all dicks are beautiful. <laughs> That's another topic for another day, but on the same time, it, that's harassment to me. Like I, I, I mean, give it the same thing is because I don't know how anyone gets your number. I think this is where this is coming from because I don't know how we can get an unsolicited dick pic to your sent to your phone. Like, what does it happen for women? I want to know. Like, is it like on Snapchat or something like that? Oh, this or? is interesting too because we're in different age groups. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Really, I don't. I don't think in my experience, if I've gotten, like, random things and it's been years and years, it's been through Facebook or usually, I guess, Facebook. Because even Snapchat, I don't think I ever have. And I don't think I ever have, like, directly to my number. Right. And who is who is sending you these? What's I mean, the relationship? To be honest, I don't even remember. I remember it's happened. But right. through Facebook, it could have been... Somebody I knew. I, don't, I mean, I it was never like. I mean, I was probably in my twenties, but I don't remember a specific time. I just remember it happening through that. And I just don't I understand how people brand. have the. They they're so brave and brazen just to show. <laughs> to show a complete stranger. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not gonna say that. But yeah, but I don't know why people have like they feel so emboldened. Because like I said, the grinder. You wouldn't walk up to someone. I'm sorry. You wouldn't walk up to somebody on the street and be like, "Zip." This is what do you think. This is cyber flashing. That's the term for it. And it's it should be just as bad as why. Like I mean, in some cases, it should be just as bad. Because you said in New York, they're making this the this is going to be a cyber flashing is going to be a crime mm-hmm. now, which I I'm behind that. But then again, at the same time, we were saying earlier, it opens up another can of worms. Like, you know, what if you have, like, a, a vengeful lover, and they're like, well, I got some unsolicited dick pics. For, or, like, well, it's, well, in Texas, what does it say? Uh, there should electronic- be a statute of limitations. And a certain amount of time, you have to report it. Well, how long do you think? Like, what, five yeah, years? That's, that, that's when it gets stiff. I don't, I don't think it should be. I think it should be a month. Because of the rate of the internet, how quickly things are, how quickly things can fall apart. Five years? No, that's way whenever your example years. is going to happen. Unfortunately, I think a month because this is only being treated like a traffic infraction. So, say you got a careless driving, this is on the same level as that. Okay. Um. So yeah, it should it should be a month. For the same thing. 
Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. But, like, I honestly, I just don't understand on Facebook Messenger. I just, I can't wait to talk about this. I'm like, does this this happen to you girls? Like, See, I always, mine are always from, like, people that I meet on Tinder that I add on Snapchat. They'll be like, hey, how are you? And I'm like, oh, I'm good. I'm walking my dog. And then suddenly, penis. (laughs) There it is. Yes, that's why. I forget what the hell. But in what? Because I was on. time I went on a dating app. Tinder? Yeah. And I was like. So just because it's considered a hookup app, is that supposed to be your consent to receive photos like this? No. Absolutely not. Because Tinder is the straight person's grinder. But, okay, but that's interesting. Like, does that, so it doesn't. If you're on a dating app, you're not consenting to that. What are you consenting to? Just to make connections? Yes, just to speak to this person. But the reason why we're going to make it, like, when we're dating, you're not dating someone to go home and play Monopoly. You're dating to, like, you know. Yeah, I have. Sometimes you are. That's literally <laughs> what I did. I mean, I, have, I mean, but, because I, you know, I heard something. I'm saving myself until marriage. Um, yeah. No. Sex with Ashley. Well, something funny that I heard was, like, you know, most of your, fr- most of your friends, you're attracted to them in some way. Mm-hmm. That's true, right? So, like, if it's on, if it's on Grindr Tender, I, like, that's what I said, I didn't really mind. Grinder or Tinder, if I receive a dick pic, because I am on that app for that reason. You are. There have been studies on Tinder, and most of the time, there are a range of different reasons. There's people on there to make friends. They move to the area. There's people on there to promote whatever it is that they're promoting. Like, there's so many different reasons. Well, why do people go on, on Tinder to make friends? Like, that's a little confusing to me. I've never done it. Well, I've read that. You know, some, like... I have made friends. <laughs> Didn't set out to, but <laughs> anyway, anywho, are we all good on this one now? Yeah, that was a funny little topic. That was. Stop sending your penis to people who don't want it. Especially me. But anyway, that's especially. Today's... Can you give him a break? <laughs> really, like it's kind of annoying. Like, you know, my block list on Facebook. Like the it's like longer than <laughs> longer than their dick. Longer than anything. <laughs> I don't even understand. Anyway, but that was a great episode. That was, that's today's episode, everyone. Our first live this isn't YouTube. Live. Well, this isn't live, but you know, recorded episode of Common Courtesy. You can see our faces. Hello. <laughs> but again, I am Sean Nicholas, aka Desire Some More. And next we have Ashley Renee, host of Sex with Ashley Renee on YouTube. Give me a subscribe. And we have and Nikki Prune. Hello. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. See you next time. Have a little common courtesy.